guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a beautiful day or night, whatever it may be for you. If you are new here, I've been doing a wedding planning series here on my channel where I'm talking all about my wedding planning process. So everything I did to plan our wedding this past October. Hi Daisy, what's up? I go into intense detail in my first couple of videos just talking about my process everything that I did and the websites, resources, things that I use. So I will be linking the playlist in the description box down below in case you missed out on any of those past videos. So as you can tell by the title, I'm talking to you guys about my eight tips on hiring your wedding photographer. So this is just all based on my personal experience, my opinion, along with the fact that I am a freelance photographer. I work within the wedding industry. So these are just kind of things that I've noticed, tips that I believe will really help you guys in your process to help make your day and the whole entire planning process leading up to your big day as easy and smooth as it can possibly be. So let's get into the video and talk about my eight tips for hiring your wedding photographer. For tip number one, I wanted to start off with probably the most obvious but most important step and that would be defining your budget. So overall, what are you willing to spend on your wedding day? And then from there, you can break things down and kind of delegate where the funds are actually going to go. I think it's just an important step. That way, once you get on to your specific vendors, you can say, okay, for my photographer, I am willing to spend $2,000. That way, as you get into my next tips of this video, it'll be a lot easier narrowing things down because you'll already have an idea of what you wanna spend and if any photographer is way above that, you can know it's not in my budget, I can't afford it. Just to give you guys an idea, wedding photographers can range anywhere from $500 to $12,000, sometimes even a little bit higher or lower, just depending on where you live. So of course, it's gonna depend on many things like travel time, how long they're gonna be at your wedding, their editing time, if they have a second shooter, like there's so many different things that go in to different photographers' pricing and packages. I think that it is important to know this going into it so you can already know, okay, this is my budget, this is what I'm willing to spend, and then moving forward, you can then narrow things down just based on price before even getting in to some of the other details. For tip number two, I wanna talk all about style. So I definitely talked more about this in the first video of this series, but it was just the idea of what I personally did with creating a vision board, gathering tons of photos on Pinterest. The same thing stands for your wedding photographer. There's so, so many different incredible photographers out there in every part of the world. Many photographers have like a light, bright and airy style. Many have a dark, dramatic, moody style, more warm, more cool tone. So that's the fun part, is just exploring what it is you want for your wedding day. What photos can you imagine hanging on your wall for years to come, as well as in your wedding album? It's just gonna be something that is personal to you and your significant other. And I think this is a really fun part of the process, is just going on the search, for what style you like and you most connect with. So this brings me to tip number three because once you have a budget in mind and then you've really landed on the aesthetic and kind of look and vibe that you like when it comes to photography, you can then get on Instagram or weddingwire.com, the knot.com, those are great websites, and just kind of go through and filter the results Go on Instagram, type in New York wedding photographer, Naples wedding photographer, wherever you live or wherever you're getting married, you can use these sites to narrow the search results of the photographers that are local to you. Now more than ever before, because social media is so huge, you can directly connect with the photographers that you are hoping to hire or get to know or whatever. So you can get on their Instagram, send them a direct message. It'll take you to their website. It'll take you to their portfolio. And you can really just use Instagram for these types of searches. These days, Instagram is your friend for not only connecting with other friends, 
sharing your own posts, but it's also gonna be an awesome resource for hiring your vendors. So speaking of WeddingWire and the knot.com, this brings me to tip number four, which is paying attention to reviews. So maybe some of you guys wouldn't think this is super important. You're just like, yeah, I'm on Instagram. I really like their feed. I'm gonna go ahead and hire them. I would personally recommend to go one step further, get on the knot.com, and once you filter the results based on where you live, where you're looking to hire a photographer along with maybe pricing. You can then go on to that photographer's site on Wedding Wire or The Knot and scroll down to the review section. And so the reason that I think this is so important is because, okay, anyone can have their highlight reel on Instagram. We all do it. We all like to make photos aesthetically pleasing, whether we're just a random person usually or a photographer so it's no different with photographers of course they're promoting their work so they're going to post the best of the best however sometimes when you go onto the knot and get to the review section you're gonna be able to see that maybe this photographer is not great with their time management maybe specific brides have had to wait a year long for their wedding album. And these are things that you would probably want to see and know before moving forward, spending your time on a call or whatever with this person who's obviously looking to get hired. I think that to save yourself a lot of time, you can just see what are people saying about them? How are they with people? Maybe they were super nasty to the mother of the bride. I don't know. Like. There's some horror stories out there. I just recommend reading the reviews, taking a moment to look over them before moving forward with step and tip number five. So for tip number five, I would say it's so important to ask the right questions. Let's just say you've now stumbled upon a photographer. Everything for the most part checks out. You love their work. They have some great reviews. Their pricing is within your budget. Move forward to the step of really reaching out, inquiring, but also asking the right questions. In my opinion, I think that there's nothing wrong with asking this photographer that you are considering hiring if they can go ahead and send you maybe one, two full wedding albums that they have shot in the past. That way you can see what their wedding day looks like from start to finish. So when they first get into the bride suite and start with getting ready photos all the way to the end of the night when it's dark, there's a lot of lights maybe from the DJ booth and the dancing is all indoors. Like you really wanna see how well do they photograph how well do they work in all different styles of indoor, outdoor types of lighting? You never know. You could get a full wedding album back from them and maybe the photos inside are super dark, very grainy. Maybe they just haven't had enough experience in different lighting settings and they don't really know the best settings to use on their camera. Yes, it's easy to shoot a subject that's just completely still, but as someone is moving or walking down the aisle or dancing, these are going to be important questions to ask them so that you can see for yourself, yes, this is a photographer I want. Everything checks out and on top of it, they're able to deliver a seamless wedding album with their entire aesthetic and style across the board. You'll just feel better that you checked into that before signing the contract and committing to hire them. Moving on to tip number six, you've already hired your wedding photographer, so congratulations. And now it's the most fun part in my opinion, which is getting to know them just on a more personal level, getting comfortable with them because they are going to be like the number one go-to person on your wedding day. So you may as well get to know them, get comfortable with them and ask some more in-depth questions. It's very important to know some other things just to give you peace of mind, just so you can kind of know going further into the planning process. Questions like, how long does it usually take for you to deliver photos? What time are you gonna be getting to my wedding venue? Or if you're getting married somewhere else and getting ready somewhere else, you know, what time are you gonna get to the hotel or wherever I am? So questions like this are just important, A, 
for you to know kind of what's going on if it's not something that they come out and talk to you about. But also it's just a way for you to connect with them. And again, just build a friendship. You and your significant other can get to know them too so that come your wedding day, you can feel as comfortable and confident as you can. Because I know for some people being in front of the camera is very uncomfortable. It's not something that you're used to having a camera shoved up in your face when you're kissing your fiance or when you're you know getting your wedding dress on you've never done that before most likely so it's really important to just i think build that relationship as the months go on towards your wedding day so come that day you don't have to be overthinking anything you can just be in the moment be present and have fun with your photographer for tip number seven this is something that i would say is probably the most important tip to me and kind of conversation that I wanted to talk about because it is so special, at least to me. And so it's the idea of having a first look versus not. If you guys don't know, kind of a newer trend happening is having a first look before your wedding ceremony. So it's where usually your photographer will grab your significant other, you'll go kind of to another location on the property, and then you can walk up to them. Maybe they have their back turned, maybe they're like behind a door, and then you kind of get to see them before the ceremony. So then your photographers can get a bunch of photos, you can ease your nerves and just be in a better headspace maybe, and then you can go on with your wedding day. I think that this is all just personal preference. It's gonna depend on many factors, whether you have a very big wedding party, a lot of photos to get through, maybe you are gonna want to have a first look. For Nate and I, we went ahead and did not do a first look. We did what was called a first touch. So again, this was something I had no idea about. Our photographers kind of gave us information and let us decide what we felt most comfortable with. So they sent us over a blog post talking about kind of the pros and cons of doing a first look, what some of their past bride and grooms have said, and their experience and all of that. So Nate and I, I think the reason that we didn't wanna do it is just because we wanted that first time we saw each other in the entire day to be when I was walking down the aisle to him. That was just something that was so special, I think from probably day one. Don't let this decision be anyone else's but your own and your significant others. Just do your research, talk to your photographers about your wedding day timeline and try to find a way to make it work and fit best for you guys. So my last and final tip for tip number eight is creating an important shot list. So hopefully your photographer and if you have a wedding planner, they're gonna go over kind of a rough idea or timeline of your day, usually like three months before your wedding day. Usually they'll go over kind of like the big earmarked moments. So when does your ceremony start? If you're doing a first look, when are you having that? As you begin to talk about this timeline, I really think it's important for you and your family members, your significant other to sit down and talk through some important photos that you want. So maybe it's specific details that you want photographed and it's like you have a very special charm or necklace from your grandmother that you want them to take photos of with your bouquet or whatever so that you have that documented. Maybe you're giving your bridesmaids, groomsmen gifts and you want that photograph. And then you have very specific kind of groupings of family photos that you want. Make sure to put that into this list prior to your wedding day so you can go over this with your photographer. They're not mind readers. They're definitely not gonna know what it is you want photos of and they're definitely not going to be super accessible day of in terms of like talking about and planning this on your wedding day because it's usually chaos. There's a lot going on. It's usually a very fast paced day. So having a document printed out where you can print one for your planner, print one for your photographer and so on, they could just have a running list of all of these important photos you want. So come your wedding day, you can be at ease and you can know that they're gonna go off of this list and get all of those special memories and moments captured 
for you to remember for years. I hope you guys enjoyed my eight tips for hiring your wedding photographer. Again, I will link my entire wedding playlist in the description box down below. Make sure to check that out. And as always, ask me any other questions you may have that you did not hear answered in some of these videos. Stay tuned for my next video because it's gonna be a very exciting collaboration to give you guys awesome ideas for finding your wedding day scent perfumes. So look out for that video. Again, I hope you have a beautiful day or night, whatever it may be for you, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.